Your voice is a bit soft. Uh-huh. Hanyin, yep. I, I can't really hear you, actually. Sorry about that. This moment I'm going to I think the volume is quite okay. Last, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Can you hear me clearly, right? How about Z Han Yin? Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's better now. Better now. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay, so look at the question, right? So the first question, I I think uh, this uh, tutorial one need to be, uh, the question need to be sought out accordingly. Okay, so if you look at the first question, Okay, so if you look at the first question, okay, given a table of a survival time for a myeloma patients, right? And then uh, the question asks you to compute and plot the estimated survival function and the hazard function. You need to estimate the median and 75th percentile of survival time of patient and describe the hazard fun uh, function on block, uh, based on plot, uh, on your plot in A. Okay, since that we already learned uh, about survival function, don't do the hazard function yet, right? So I would like you to, number one, compute and plot the estimated survival function, right? And find the median and 75 percentile of a survival function for the patient, right? So because this is actually what we learned from last week, okay? And then um, the second one, okay, if you look at this question, consider data two, leukemia and data provided in lecture note, okay? So if you refer to the lecture notes, okay, we have uh, look at the week one lecture notes, you can find the leukemia data. So I think like this uh, question two is quite um, similar to question number one, okay? You need to compute the estimated of survival function for 
two groups and plot the estimated for both group in a single plot. And you should discuss about the, uh, the shape of the graph and also uh, you can comment about the survival uh, functions for each group. Okay, so shall we start with um, and finally just to uh, some proving part. Okay, so for part question one, can we just focus on the survival function? Okay, and um, we can answer A and B. Okay, so describe the hazard function based on the plot in A. I think like the hazard function in C, you need to plot and compute the hazard function so that you can describe about the hazard function in A. Right, so I think at the moment, like you need to do part A and part B. Okay, so any of you have done your tutorial? Any of you? So if you don't touch about this tutorial, right, so you will be given some time, right? So to do this uh, part A and B, and then we are going to discuss the solution at seven o'clock. OK, so because uh, you need to have a skill on how to compute and also to plot the survival function, right? So given the survival time and the number of patients dying in the interval and also the number of patients who is censored in that interval, right? So how are you going to um, to plot the estimated survival function? Right, so based on uh, last week lecture, okay, we can compute and plot the estimated survival function. Okay, uh, so can you? Yes, Ajumal. Uh, this question it says that uh, there are fifty patients, right? Uh, yeah. so if we add all the um patient, I think we only get forty eight, including the censored patient. Yeah. Forty eight, is it? Fifty? I don't know, but when I count it, it's fifty. Uh, I just tried with Excel just now, but I, I just get uh forty eight. No, but if you count the number of patients in the interval and also the number of patients in the census, it is fifty.
Okay, let me let me check again the question, right? But I believe it's 50. Okay, maybe some error. So never mind, okay, if it's 48, then it should be, just hang on with that, okay? If you, okay, so just to double confirm with you, but I, I don't think there is any issue because this uh, repeated the same tutorial used last semesters. All right.
Okay. Uh, regarding the number of patients, I think there is no issue for that question. It's still 50 patients. So we cannot say that the number of patients dying in the interval and the number of patients is censored in that interval should be equal to the 250. Okay, so the thing here like, um, I mean like you, we cannot say like at the end of the intervals, okay, the equation, the N, NJ should be zero, right? So um, you should see that the patient, um, we have uh, 50 patients, and you can see that number of patient who is dying uh, column and also number of patient who is censored. OK, so uh, dying means that they are not healthy, right? So we have two remaining patient who is able to survive after end of the study and they are healthy. OK, so this is why like there is no issue regarding this question. We still have 50 patients and you can see that um, the patient of dying OK, is actually um, a patient who is uh, is DJ, a patient who is die after the uh, 40 survival times. And the number of patient who is censored is, is a patient who is either lost to follow up or die not because of this uh, myeloma. OK, maybe dying because of the um, other 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 uh, other issues like die because of accidents or anything, but not dying because of myeloma. So in this case, uh, we should start our N NJ equals to 50, not 48. OK, so Ajumal, is it clear? OK, yes. okay. Yes. so uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that number of dying and number of censored should equals to 50. Uh, okay. OK, all right.
Okay, so can you do a uh, question 1A? Right, if you still have no idea on how to do this question, okay, let us look at how to uh, to perform, uh, how to calculate the S hat T, the survival function, or how to perform the life table, okay? Right, so here if you look at, uh, if you look here, what I did is actually I paste the table, okay, where the table consists of 50 patients, right, with uh, myeloma, uh, disease, right? So here, the first column represent the survival times in month, and then the second column is the number of patient who is dying in the interval, and then number of patient who is censored in the interval, okay? So if you recall uh, back last week, okay, um, I have discussed with you the life table and also the Kaplan-Meier uh, life, uh, Kaplan-Meier estimated survival function okay so if you recall the uh, both can also can calculate uh, the survival function okay for the Kaplan-Meier uh, the survival function uh, the estimated survival function is S hat t right for the life table is S star t right so if you look at my blank table down here okay here okay you can see that okay so some of you might question yourself, like what is the difference between the life table and also the uh, Kaplan-Meier table, right? So um, I think like we have highlighted um, when is it going to be similar, like Kaplan-Meier, when is it, uh, when Kaplan-Meier is better than the um, life table and et cetera. So you refer back to the lecture note, but since this table giving you the number of patient who is dying and number of patient who is censored okay so we can just represent um dj cj nj and so on to calculate as starting right so oh okay to share with you the screen, it's easier for me to switch, okay? So, DJ, CJ, etc., please refer to your lecture notes, okay? Right, if you recall back to your lecture notes on how to calculate the life table estimate of survival function, okay? So now, we define DJ as a number of deaths, CJ as the number of censored in the J's interval and NJ is the number of alive at the start of J's interval and hence at the risk of death, right? So that is why like uh, when you calculate the number of survival, uh, no, the number of dying and the number of censored, it is not equals to 50 because we, um, we are interested with the number of a patient who is still alive at the end of the interval, okay? So, to do that, right, so um, DJ and CJ, you can get it straight away from the table, right? Sorry. So DJ and CJ, you can straight away uh, take from the table, okay? So you can take DJ is the number of patient who is dying, which is the second column, and CJ represent the number of patient who is censored. Right, so what you can do is just copy and paste for um, for uh, equation. Okay, so you can just simply copy and paste them. I cannot copy now. Select object. Okay, so I just copy and paste. Right, my DJ. Right, and then also my third column as my censored observation, CJ. Right, so the question here is like, we want to calculate our NJ, right? And okay, before that, let me show you the lecture notes, right? So to calculate the S hat T, right, you need to calculate the 
average number of patient who is at risk, right? So you need the N prime J. So to calculate the N prime J, you need NJ minus with your CJ over two. Okay, and then once you get your M prime J, you can calculate the probability of death, okay, as DJ over N prime J, right? And then the probability of survival is N prime J minus DJ over N prime J, okay? So finally, your estimated survival function as star T equals to the product J from one until case interval and uh, of your uh, survival probability. Are you okay with that? Okay, so let's try this on, right? So we have obtained DJ and CJ from the question. And here you can start with um, NJ. Okay, the first NJ is equals to 50, right? How about the second one? Okay, so your N prime J, okay, just write down here. Okay, I just write it down here. So N prime J here, this one. N prime J equals to NJ minus CJ over 2. Okay, so just write it here. N prime J equals to NJ minus CJ over 2. So in this case, your N prime J equals to 50 minus 1 over 2, right? So this will be, it's 49.5, okay? So just write it here, okay? Then your PI, okay, and your PI, which is the probability of survival function, okay, PI equals to um, NJ, recall it back from the lecture note, okay, the survival function is N prime J minus DJ over N prime J. Okay. No, the whole thing. So it should be 1 minus dj over n prime j. This is true, right? Because probability of death is dj over n prime j. Therefore, probability of survival is equals to 1 minus dj over n prime j. Okay? Right, so you know that your S starty, uh, S starty here equals to the product of your PI, okay? Now, you can calculate your NJ and prime J and so on, okay? Right, so your next NJ is actually 47, am I right? Correct me if I'm wrong, right? So the... Right, so I just calculate my NJ first, okay? So the next one is 47 minus 8 is 39. And 39 minus 4 is 35. And the next one is 30. And then 30 minus 9 is 20. That 21 minus 3 is 20. Okay, so 18 minus 3 is 15. Okay, so 15 minus 4 is 11. Finally, is 11 minus 5 is 6. Hi, Doctor. Okay. Uh, 
NJ yeah. at interval 36 to 42 should be 15 instead of 18. 15? Yeah. Which one? 30, 21, 15? Yep. And then it is a 12, 8, and 3. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so can you calculate your n prime j? Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? <clears throat> right. So, any problem with my n prime j? Okay. If there is no problem with n prime j, can we proceed with the pi? So the formula for pi is equals to nj prime minus dj over nj prime. Okay, so you need to use this nj prime and the dj column, right? I just put to four decimal places. Okay.
I just want to double check that the is that okay if the PI for the third interval slightly higher than the second one, but it's okay because we are not looking for the probability of survival. We are looking for the product of the probability of estimated survival, right? So I believe that if you you if you times each of your probability of survival, you can see that it will have a down uh, or a decreasing trend. Okay. So any issue with PI? Okay, just use the formula. The PI equals to NJ prime minus DJ over NJ prime or it is equals to one minus DJ over NJ prime. Okay, so the PI is actually the estimated survivor. No, it is a probability of surviving, right? So S star T equals to the product of PI. So this one should be equals to your PI, which is Okay, so any problem with S thirty? Hi, doctor. This is questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. From our previous uh, lecture example, the first interval S 
star t will always equal to one, right? But then uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot. Where is the example? This one, is it the example one? Um, is the this one slightly different. This is the Kaplan Meyer. The one from the textbook. The one in the textbook. Yeah. This is chapter one. I think in page 22. Page? But Yeah, it should start with, with one, right? Okay, the reason here, this is slightly different, okay, with our um, uh, question, okay, because here we uh, use exactly um, 48, right? So for that question, if we have 50 patients, right? So we start with one then, okay? So I need to fix this one. We should start with one. And then times with uh, 0 0.9 and so on, is it? Yeah, I, I think that uh, your answer is correct for the first interval until the ninth interval. And then just uh, mm. cut it and paste it from the second and onwards and replace the first one to one will do. And uh, the figure will be correct. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the solution from uh, tutorial one. Okay, it's not exactly start with one, okay? You can, yeah, you can either start with one or you can just simply use with, uh, uh, just get the first interval of your PI. Okay? So your plot will look like this, okay? Is there any reason why we should start with one? It doesn't it doesn't mention any anywhere, right? Uh, this is the lecture week one. Let's have a look here. Is it like compulsory to start at one? Yeah, that's not necessary to start at one. So it's not necessary to start at one. Okay. Uh, doctor. Mm. Uh, it, it states that the first interval to the beginning of the key interval. So the first interval the is zero. Of... Yeah, so everyone survived at time oh, zero. Yeah. Yeah, everyone survived at times, so it makes sense. So, zero to six.
So we should start here with one, right? Everything's, everything's, everything changed, right? Uh, I think I see, suppose just move the previous figure downward uh, for the next interval, and everything is still the same. Which one? That? From the, the third one. Uh, from the second one, you you just move to the next interval. Means that the third one will be zero point eight something, and the fourth one will be zero point seven six six five, and so on. Um, the actually, third one, it should be the same, right? Um, see the, the second one, it will be equal to 1 times 0 0.9596, right? It's, it's supposed to be you times with the second one, right? So it should be, it should be 0 0.8901. Um, I think that one is for Kaplan Mayer, right? Because from the textbook, uh, we can see that it is actually times the, the one next to it. I also get confused now. <laughs> okay. Uh, logically speaking, is uh, at time zero, everyone is survived, and then from uh -huh. time zero to the the time six. Time zero, yeah, the probability to survive is that the probability six to survive, is equal, right? Hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So this one's supposed to be. This one's supposed. To, yeah, nine five, nine six. And then this one is. This one time this one, right? Um, actually, doctor, you, you can just move the, the lowest one, the second lowest one, 0 0.1940 to the last one, and then everything moves down by one level. Which one? I got confused now. <laughs> yeah, the, the 0 0.1940, the one in the, yeah, you can just, Paste it in the last interval because everything is just times one. Yeah. This one. Is it? Yeah. The last one? Yep. And, and then this uh, one. This one. Is it? Yep. Just move huh? one level downward. This one. No, this one, right? The, the third one, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. And what is the value for the third one? Um, it is 0 0.8541. Why is it suddenly like become cool? I don't, I don't get it. Oh, sorry. Why is it they change? <laughs> okay. Right. So yeah, you're correct. Right. Okay. Uh, sorry, doctor. Mm. Uh, just now, uh, the answer, the first survival function is 0 0.9596. Uh, is it uh, from other textbook? Is it the answer is different? The, the, uh? textbook, the textbook just take, uh, it's only 48 patients. So in this question, if we follow 50 patients, then our PI should be different, right? Am I answering the question? Uh, the, the survival functions are so uh, should be started at one now. Uh, not like the answer yep. just now start at 0 0.9 something. Mm -mm, mm -mm, because at the beginning. So we believe that at time point, you should start at the beginning. So in this case, we should calculate the S star T at the beginning. So at zero, at the started of uh, starting time of your study, we believe that everyone survived. 
Okay. So we should start with one. Okay, and then the six. Um, the second one is six. So that's why it's one times 0 0.9596. And so on. Okay. Right, so any, any more question? Uh, doctor? Yeah. Hi, sorry. Uh, can I ask with regards to the balance of the two patients? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, why is it not censored in the last interval? Which one? As in like, because there is like a balance, yeah, the balance of two patients. 54. 54. Yeah, I mean like, why, why is it not in that interval? Because they actually survived till the end of the study period. I don't, like, don't that question. like don't that two patients because uh I mean remember uh just now one of our colleagues actually said that there's forty eight patients but then yes. uh, there's yes. fifty so there's like a balance of two. Uh -huh. Yeah, so don't that the balance of two will be censored in the last interval because they actually survived till the end of the period. Mm -hmm. You should extend the interval then. You got what I mean? So given this, in this, inter because if you want a balanced CJ, right, maybe we can extend another interval here. So that means 60 to 66? Yeah. Should, should have equal length, right? Uh -huh. For the life table. Okay, but then the, the 60 don't, in the, the interval of 54 to 60 don't include I think like what, what you should do, what should you in do is actually plot the survival function first, and then you can see that it is slightly different because it's supposedly like if we plot the survival function at the end of the interval, it should be flat, right? But in this case, you will have like because we will have the the last one is is going down. You got what I mean? I don't know, but I think I need to I need to show the the plot first because this one I think um. The question, I think maybe because um, it's either it's different in the question, okay, because you can see from the example from the book, but um, if we have 50 patients, right, so here we give you a patient of dying and sense it, okay, so say that we don't, we don't change the question, say that we have 50 patients uh, who survive, uh, no, 50 patients of myeloma, and this is the number of patient dying, and this is the number of patient uh, censored. Okay, so uh, you can see that um, you should you said that it should be balanced, right? So in this case, I just I just stop until interval sixty. So I like if I want I want a balanced um, uh, balanced data, I should include one more interval. Okay. But this is what, what the data is given. You got what I mean? Right, so the next step you need to do is to plot the survival function, okay? So, yeah, and then what is the next question? Estimate the median and 75th percentile of the survival time of a patient. Right, so based on this solution, because it's already like uh, the S S T is already calculated wrongly, therefore the plot for for the estimated survival function should be difference as well, right?
solution. Why is it stop working? Okay, the next one. I just copy and paste the plot. This one is a wrong plot, okay? Because if we start at S star T one, then your plot should be at one. But this one is based on the uh, the solutions, okay? Any question? Chat. Yeah. So this is your estimated plot. How do you do that? Um, I'm doing this by using Excel. Excel. Okay, that's yeah. good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But do you know that, um, I don't know, uh, maybe like since that have you received the email from the university that asked you that we are going to have a face-to-face -face class in week eight? Right, so um, yeah, so I think like, okay, so thank you so much for sharing this uh, solution, but you know that the probability of uh, the, the, the probability should be equals to one, right? We cannot have 1.2 there. Okay, so that is a good uh, shape, okay? where you have a downtrend uh, survival function for uh, patients of uh, myeloma, uh, sorry, for the myeloma patients. Okay, uh, just want to have, uh, to, to pass you the info. Okay, so uh, you know that uh, this uh, uh, week eight, right, so, um, you need to come back to UM because we are going to have a future. But I believe that majority of you are international students, right? And um, I don't think that, I, I'm not sure, like, are you ready to come back to UM or what? But uh, based on the discussion, I don't think we can, I mean, like, we can do 100% online again, right? So maybe we should do the hybrid uh, lecture. Right, so we can we must have a face to face and online at the same time. Hi, right, okay. Joyce, um, doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I get to know some of us registered under the remote learning module. Mm, mm. So, will the how many, how many from how many from remote learning for this course? I'm not sure. I, I cannot detect unless like if I go to the registrar and. I, and ask like, how many from the the survival uh, I mean like the survival student how many of you is it two only two three of you okay which is the Zing Zi Han Yin Ka Chun Tan and Yi Xin Chu so that means we are going to have a hybrid uh, hybrid program I mean like we are going to have a face to face and also um, I'm going to do a, a live session as well, right? But I, I, I'm not sure because it's only, I think it's only 25 of you. So I believe that uh, UM have a facilities for hybrid class. Regarding this item, should I further check with uh, faculty or dean something? Mm, I think like for the remote, remote learning yeah. student, um, there is no option. You need to do it online. 
So oh. I think like for those for those who are who have uh, no issue, I mean like you are in UM in KL, you need to come to class. Uh, we should do the hybrid uh, course. I mean like hybrid lecture. So um, uh, I'm having like a live lecture in the lecture room, and also I'm doing the the online class uh, for the remote learning student. Okay. How about the Chinese student? Like, are you planning to come back to UM? International student. What time now? It's 7.45. Shall we take a break now? So that we can come back um, at 8.05 for uh, Margaret Freya. Is it okay? And then we are going to continue with Finish off the tutorial one. Okay, so if you are okay with that, right? So have a discussion among you. Like, um, I know, I believe that most of you would like to have an online class. If you ask me, I prefer the online class. So if they want to implement new thing, just implement it next semester. But I don't know, like uh, since that they already opened the borders and Malaysia already changed to endemic. So uh, there is no choice. So week eight, we have to do face to face. And since that we have a remote learning students in this class, I think the lecture should be a hybrid lecture. OK. All right. So see you at 8.05 uh, to continue on the second question and also uh, the remaining part of question one. Are you okay with that? Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>